In this video, we're going to take a look at the fifth API testing lab on Port Swigger's Web Security Academy. The lab is called Exploiting Server Side Parameter Pollution in a REST URL. In the last video, we looked at exploiting server side parameter pollution in a query string. So, we covered a lot of the background information about server side parameter pollution, which we won't cover again today. However, let's have a look at the material that's specific for this lab. A RESTful API may place parameter names and values in the URL path rather than the query string. For example, consider the following path where we have slash API slash users slash one, two, three. The URL path might be broken down as follows, where API is the root API endpoint, slash users represents the resource, in this case users, and slash 123 represents parameter, in this case the identifier for a specific user. Consider an application that enables you to edit user profiles based on their username. Requests are sent to the following endpoints. We've got an edit profile.php with the name Peter being provided as a get parameter, and this results in the following server side request. So this is translated into this path. An attacker may be able to manipulate server-side URL path parameters to exploit the API. To test this vulnerability, add path traversal sequences to modify parameters and observe how the application responds. You could submit a URL encoded peter slash dot dot slash admin as the value of the name parameter, and that would create a GET request like this, and it might result into the following server-side request where it will basically have a path traversal in the username and if the server-side client or the backend API normalizes the path, it might be resolved to slash API, slash private, slash users, slash admin. There is some additional theory information in this section, like testing for server-side parameter pollution in structured data formats, but they don't have a lab associated with them, and they're not relevant to this current lab, so I'm not going to go through them in this video. Maybe there will be a lab for these in future, and we'll come back and go through this material, but if not, I'd advise you go through it in your own time. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's take a look at today's lab, which is exploiting server-side parameter pollution in a REST URL. And the description simply says, to solve the lab, log in as the administrator and delete Carlos. And we're told our required knowledge, which we've just been through. So let's open up the lab. Okay, so first thing we might do is see if we can go to an API endpoint and get any kind of documentation, but we can't. So let's go and have a look at the site functionality. We've got some products here that we can go and have a look at, but there's no option to add them to a cart or anything like that. So we'll go to the account page, try and log in with some default credentials, but we weren't given any this time and they don't work. So the only other thing we can do is click forgotten password. I'm gonna put in here Carlos, which is the user we want to delete. And it says that it has been sent to that user. So let's hit F12 as well, see do we have anything. We have our forgotten password script. So this is where that form is being built up to send off the forgotten password request. And then we can also see that we've got this endpoint in here, forgotten password, password reset token equals, and that's where we'll be able to provide that. So we could go and try that up here, just with a random code and see what we get. And it says invalid token. So we've been through all the functionality that I could see on the page. Let's go through to burp and see do we have any interesting requests and when I say interesting I'm looking for something that says slash API and I don't see anything so far. So the next thing to do is try and probe the forgotten password. So I'm going to send the post request to the repeater and we'll go and play around with this. Some of the things that we have been doing previously we did like and username and then set this to a second username. Click send and see what comes back. Okay it just came back with at normal user. So it looks like it took the second one because if I take that out again, it comes back with Carlos. So it looks like it actually took the second username we provided. But what we didn't do there was URL encode the ampersand. So I'll do that now. And now it says the username Carlos. So it's appended that together. It says it doesn't exist. The other thing that we could do is use that hash symbol. And again, we'll need to URL encode it. But for now, let's just note that that says, please refer to the API definition. So we've got an invalid route. So I'll do hash again. Let me do control and U to URL encode it. And then we'll submit it. But we still get invalid API routes. So that didn't just take Carlos as the username. So the next thing we want to try was the path traversal. Let's go back. So we've just got Carlos in here now. And then I'm going to do slash dot dot slash administrator. Submit. And we've still got normal user. Let's try and add a couple more dot dot slashes. That one is an invalid route. Okay. Okay, so invalid route until we put in enough there and then we get back a different error. But let me go back. Can we do dot dot slash administrator? No. 
That is the normal user, which isn't the Carlos one. Okay, so what I'll do here is try and verify this. This looks like it's the administrator that's reset using that path traversal, but we can verify that by just putting in an incorrect username, change it to administrator X, and notice it says that it does not exist. So there is a path traversal here. But we noted a second ago that if we put in too many of these, I think it was either four of them or five of them, five by the looks of it. If we put in five, we get back this unexpected response from API server, and it says it was not found. So this is an indication that we've now reached the web root. So we have traversed our directory right back as far as it can go, basically. So now that we're at the root, maybe we would start to have a look to see if there's any kind of API documentation around here. For example, what happens if I change this administrator X to API and then click on send and it says invalid root. Now, what if I change it to API X and now it comes back with this error again, resource not found. So that's an indication that API does exist, but API X doesn't exist at the root. And we could put this into like Burp Intruder and try and do some common API paths and files, or we can go back to the Web Security Academy and look at what some of the most common were. I think there's a list of like five or 10 of them. And one of those was the openapi.json. And if we do openapi.json and click send, let me do that again and put an X just to see is that valid? Okay, it's not valid. Let me go back. Uh, I think I'm missing the hash at the end. So if there's something else which is coming after this query on the back end, then we're going to need to comment that out. So let me add the hash symbol again, control and U to URL encoder. And we still get invalid root, but I think that's because I removed one of the dot dot slashes. There we go. All right. So we put that back in and now we get an error message from OpenAPI saying it's version 3.0.0. .0. And it's leaked out one of the endpoints, which is slash API slash internal slash v1 slash users, and then a username, and then slash field, and then a field parameter. So the first thing we might do here is go and try and copy and paste some of this path into the browser and see if we can access it, but we can't. I already did try that, and it makes sense because it does say internal, so it's an internal API. But we can go and see if we can use this field now. So we know it says that the path is slash users, which we're at at the moment as we're trying to reset the username. And then it has a username, which we've got at the moment, that's Carlos. And then it has field, so we can actually set that as field. And then let's just try and set one, two, three. And I'm going to put back that hash symbol as well. Control and U. We send that off. And this time it says this version of API only supports email for security reasons. So that's probably a hint that one of the fields, which it does support, is insecure. And that's why it has been limited to only support the email field. So we could try and change this anyway to email or change that one, two, three. Put in email and it should come back with the email address, which it does. So maybe we'd go and try and fuzz some other fields now to see if we can put in anything else but email here. And note that one of the things we did was this password reset token, which is a field we would love to have access to. I'm going to take a copy of that and paste that in here and click send. Okay, we get back the same message that it doesn't support it for security reasons. But what it actually says is this version of the API only supports email. And remember that whenever we were doing the pass reversal, we found that it leaked out that slash internal slash v1. So potentially we can change the version that this actually uses. First of all, I'm going to change this username to administrator. That's the user that we're targeting. And let's try and do our path traversal again. This time before the username, we'll do dot dot slash dot dot slash we want to go back to directories and we want to go into that v1 directory because it was saying that it's version 3 at the moment on the open api error that we saw earlier so we'll try v1 and then we need to go back into the users and then we can leave everything else as it is let's try and click on send and we get back a password reset token so we can now go and send our earlier request to password reset token i'll send that to the repeater and paste this in Click Submit, and it's now going to ask us to put in a new password. Okay, let me show the response in browser. And I'll just put in a new password of cat. Go to my account, and let's try and log in as the administrator. And we can, so now we can just go to the admin panel and delete the user Carlos. And that's it, that's how we can exploit server-side parameter pollution in a REST URL. So this was the final API testing lab and also the final lab in the server-side parameter pollution section. So let's go and have a look at the how to prevent server-side parameter pollution section. So we've got an uncharacteristically short prevention section, which says 
To prevent server-side parameter pollution, use an allow list to define characters that don't need encoding, and make sure that all of the user input is encoded before it's included in a server-side request. You should also make sure that all input adheres to the expected format and structure. Anyway, that is going to wrap it up for this video. As usual, let me just recommend that you sign up to the Integrity platform if you want to find some API vulnerabilities and get paid for it. And in the next video, we'll start looking at GraphQL API vulnerabilities. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.